This is the EuroLeague Fantasy Challenge Podcast with Javi Gancedo and Frankie Sachs. Javi, we made it here. Yeah, we're in Berlin. Welcome to the final four edition of the Early Fantasy Challenge podcast. We're finally together. You're here. It's unbelievable. I'm real. I'm real. Yeah, so, yeah. so are you. It is. And we, that's it. We're here in, in the heart of the German capital, and we're, we've got only four games left this season. Right. The last four games to impact your EuroLeague Fantasy Challenge teams. And they're going to be played in Ur Arena, and we're going to go right there to show you the arena from the outside. And we're here in the Berlin Wall to well, talk a little bit about the games and uh, what's going to happen in this final two rounds of the Yearly Fantasy Challenge. There's a lot to talk about, and these are the rounds that are going to decide who is the champion, not just of the Yearly, but of the Yearly Fantasy Challenge. But let's talk about both, fantasy and real life. What, which game do you want to start with? Yeah, this looks like a Beastie Boys video, like walking and talking to the camera like this. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome. Well, uh, well, let's talk about first about Olympiacos and Real Madrid. I think this game is going to be low scoring, and I think it's going to be... Well, maybe if you have to choose the team captain, I wouldn't choose it from this game. I don't think that the highest ranked uh, player in the semifinal is going to come from this game. What do you think? I think that's a legitimate take. I understand why, why you're, you think that. But when I went back and I looked at the last few games, including last season's championship game, they have not been such low scoring games. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I think it can go either way. Well, uh, there's one, one topic to discuss, I think, the fact that Gabriel Deck is injured. Mm -hmm. has a lot of impact. That means that Gershon Yabusel uh, is going to play more. That means that Mario Hesonia is going to see more minutes at the fourth position. And I think uh, that's something to talk about. Also, um, I think that Alec Peters is a mismatch in this game. And uh, my recommendation for this game would be Alec Peters in Olympiacos. And either Hesonia or Yabusel, probably Hesonia uh, with Real Madrid. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, look, Hazonia has played very well this season against Olympiacos. He's found his spots. He's put up some good numbers. He's an experienced guy. I think the experience really matters. It's hard to say that about one team over, over the other here because both teams have high-level experience. But, but he's a guy who's been successful with the pressure on, and I think that's, that's very important. So he is somebody who I, I'm going with. But I, I have three guys that I'm counting on for, uh, for Real Madrid because I, I, I do believe this will be a, a high scoring, more high scoring than people expect. I don't think that Olympiacos is going to be able to kill the pace and make it a game in the 50s or the 60s. And if that's the case, then you got to find the guys in, in, in Real Madrid you believe in. And I have several. Who, who do you have well, in this game? Well, uh, like I said, I have Hesonia and I have uh, Peters because uh, I don't like the matchup between Campazzo and World Cup. Campazzo, all Euro League, World Cup Defensive Player of the Year, going against mm -hmm. each other. I think they're going to kind of cancel each other in terms of PAR. So I don't think it's a good idea to have any of them. But at the same time, there's not many players to choose from. And these two players are the starting point guards. So maybe if I have to go with one or the other, I'll probably go with Campazzo. I think this is his time. This is his final four. It's a chance to win a third title. This time he's going to be like the, almost the leader of the team. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say because Madrid has so many good players. Right. But uh, Campazzo would be my choice between the two. Uh, also, uh, every player in Madrid is a uh, Euroleague champion. The only thing that Yabusele didn't win it on the court, like he was Correct. outside the final. He's part of a championship team, but he didn't, he didn't play on the floor. Uh, in Olympiacos, we have three players who won the Euroleague. Alec Pires, uh, Costas Papa Nicolau, and Nigel Williams-Goss, who has uh, an opportunity to win back-to-back -back with different teams, something very rare. But maybe Williams-Goss would be my choice for Olympiacos at guards, because um, mm -hmm. he wants to prove something, I'm sure. I, I'm going with uh, with a person that's not on a lot of people's radar, radar right, right now, but the only Final Four MVP at this Final Four is Tavares. That's right, uh, and he played. He missed one game this year against Real Madrid, but he was obviously huge last year in the championship game. And the first time the guys met this this year, he was big. So that there is a narrative of oh well, you know, Olympiacos has three big men and they'll cancel them out. I'm not so sure. I think when you're the man then nobody stops you. And yeah. I think Campazzo could be the man. I think Tavares could be the man. And I think Hazone could be the man. So I, I have all three of them. And it, when I, that's, ultimately that's going to be my, my guiding principle with all the guys who I'm picking. Who can be the man? Well, mm. you know who I think could be the man in Olympiacos? Isaiah Cannon. Huh? Yeah, he was the man in the last year's final. He had 20 points or something. Yeah. And he but, had another strong game against him this year, and I believe he's he's built for big games also. He's so he's someone else I've got. Uh, what, I what I don't like about Tavares is this: uh, he's used to be a mismatch, mm -hmm. but in this game he's not going to be a mismatch. Mustafa Fall is just as tall as him, and uh, Olympiacos had Nikola Milutinov, and they have uh, Moses Wright. They, they're loaded at center. Uh, 
Uh, Madrid is not used to play with teams can match their physicality at center, but Olympiacos is one of them. And that's why I think Tavares may not be a good choice. Uh, then again, like you said, he's the only final for MVP. He dominated the semifinals last year uh, against Barcelona. Not and he had a very, very strong game against Real Madrid in the finals. And if you look back, he had a very first strong game. He only played them once this year, but he's very strong in that game also. Look where we are. Exactly. This is the most uh, famous spot in the Berlin Wall. Yeah. In the east side wall. And we're going to Uber Arena. We can discuss the second final four over there, right? Well, you haven't made your predictions yet, though. Who do you think is going to take mm -hmm. Real Madrid against Olympiacos? I think Madrid wins the game. And that makes the player more attractive because of the 10%. But like I said, I think uh, Hessen, yeah, and probably Campato would be my, my choices of uh, players to have a uh, must have players. And head coach? I'm going to go with Chus Mateo. Okay. Uh, over anybody else. I really think Madrid is going to be, it has more, more possibility. I mean, they, they earn to be the favorites in this final four, right? Uh, they, they, were the first, they were the first team to, they were decided 10 0, was the first team to the playoffs, first team to the final four. I mean, nobody wants to call themselves favorites, but Madrid is a favorite. Uh, I hear that, but do you know what those first 10 games where they ten, win 10 no? You know what they mean now? Mm -hmm. They mean nothing. Yeah. Right? It's, it's one game. It's whoever's better in this one game. And uh, I think it'll be, uh, I, this I'm willing to, uh, I'll put, I'm willing to stake it. Whoever wins this game, I believe will win the championship. Whoever, whichever wins this game, their coach will be my coach for, for, the, for the championship game. I'm, I'm really nervous. I can go either way. Um, I'm not picking a, a, a coach for this game, but on, on the court, I, I think that Olympiacos has what it takes to upset them. I think it's, it's more important about, uh, like I said, the first 10 games of the, year, of the year don't matter. It's what shape are you in now? And I'm going with the Reds. We have history here. Uh, well, well, kind of history, but we have basketball history there. Right there, it's the Uber Arena, home of the Final Four. Let's go over there, talk about the second semifinal. So Javi, right now we're in between, we're at the heart of the Final Four, in between the two buildings that house all the basketball action. Absolutely, this is the Uber Eats Music Hall where the ANG tournament is, is playing, ANGT tournament, uh, the Junior tournament. Uh, and this is Uber Arena where the Final Four is played, very convenient, maybe 25 meters away from each other. And that's where everything happens. So uh, that's why Berlin is, is being home of the Final Four several times because it's, it's really good to, it's really convenient. And this, this, this building is new, it hosts concerts and uh, it's the most anticipated junior tournament probably in the history of the, uh, of the tournament itself. It's gonna be interesting. I know there's, there's players that, that are must see at the junior tournament, there's guys, there's, there's the man that you like to call the beast Yeah. in Barcelona. There's the stars coming from America, from Overtime Elite. But we're here to talk about the other semifinal. We already spoke about what we think Real Madrid against Olympiacos. Now it's time for Panathinaikos against Fenerbahce. Yeah, like I said, I think it's gonna be the highest scoring game of them all. And since I think Panathinaikos is gonna win, I'm gonna pick Matias Tesor as the captain. I think he has kind of an advantage, physical advantage against everybody, but maybe Jonathan Motley. I think it's time for him to, to shine at the Final Four. Uh, it's his time. Uh, okay, he's a newcomer in the Final Four, but I think he has everything uh, to, to do really well. By the way, the, the player's entrance is this way. So it's going to be, we're getting closer to where the players are going to access That's the right. arena. That's right. Um, yeah, no, we, this, this is where the action is happening and we're, we're giving a little bit of the, uh, you know, around the scenes look for, uh, yeah, exactly. for the fans. What do you think about Fenerbahce? Who's going to be, uh, uh, it surprised me and I have to say, okay, it's logical because we won the Eurocup. He's a very experienced player, but Scotty Wolbekin is going to be in the Final Four for the first time in his yes. career. It's unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Um, I will say that I had him in my lineup and then I, I did take him out of my lineup after seeing what, how he played this, this season against Fenerbahce and it makes me... Uh, sorry, against Panathinaikos, which makes me a little bit nervous. Um, yeah, Panathinaikos is, is a bit of a, of a, of a new team. Um, so, so there are, uh, I hate to say chemistry questions, but aside from the series against Maccabi, they've never really been as a unit crunched together. Of course, Fenerbahce went through something really different this year in terms of chemistry and building and, and having a mid-season coaching change and then getting red hot. This is a game where I can see going, going either way. Um, Going with, with, with my gut, who are the players, the big time players come on the final four? So I think Lasor is one of them and you have to have them. I think Kendrick Nunn, uh, MVP for last month, he's another one of them. Um, but uh, for Fenerbahce, the player who, who my gut tells me you have to have him, you have to play him, is uh, Marco Guduc. Mm. I like Nick Kalechtis. Uh, he's been playing fantastic in the playoffs. He plays against his former team. He was yearly champion with Panathinaikos. I think the motivation and the, the, the good shape he's in, 
makes him a perfect choice, also very cheap in the Fantasy Challenge. So I would go, if I had to pick any of the Fenerbahce guards, I would be Nick Kalaitis. And I also I like Jonathan Motley a lot. Mm -hmm. But since I'm picking Tavares and I'm picking the sword, there's no room for him. Well, that's what it comes down to Kalatis. If I could take five guards, I think I would probably have Kalatis. Yeah. But I, but I like Tavares as my center alongside the sword. Um, I, I like the four guards that I already have, so then I, I kind of, I kind of ran, ran out of room. Uh, Goodrich is the only player I'm taking for Fenerbahce, and I am taking, as no. my head coach, Ataman. No Hayes Davis. No Hayes Davis. I, I, again, I, I, you know, it, the previous matchups don't tell you everything. The coaches are going to make changes, especially with Fenerbahce, the first time around. The different, different coach even. Things will be different. But two games against uh, Panathinaikos, Hayes Davis was not... Mm. Yeah, you know, I think that he, uh, his, he one game he had a, had a negative PIR, the other one was only a couple points. Uh, and that just made me, gave me some concern that it's not worth for 14 and a half credits rolling the dice on him. Uh, the good thing about doing this live and together is that I can show you my team. Uh, and uh, let's, see, let's see what I have. Uh, right now I have Kendrick Nunn, mm -hmm. because he was the uh, April and May MVP, along with Hesonia, Peters. Can you see? Then, why am I telling you this? I'm going to show it. Show yeah. them. Show the people. Yeah, yeah, I will. It's, uh, but I'm going to tell because it might be a bit, a bit too small. But This is great TV. This is great TV. Yeah, it's Nan, Peter, Sesonia, Tavares, and the Sword. I have a World Cup, a six man. Mateo's coach. And then filling the bench is Jules, Rodriguez, McKissick, and Papa Petru. You see four very experienced players. So we have no, no, no trades. Uh, there are no turns in the Final Four. That's right. So I'm, I'm picking just six good players and four experienced players on the bench. Yeah, so so I, I right now I have McKissick in a six-man spot, and I might actually swap it out with Goodrich, but that, that's the only change um, that I'll have. But yeah, my, my, my starting five so far, I've got the three guys that we spoke of from Real Madrid, the two guys from Pantanecos, those are locks. I have to sign my six-man. I will have a fairly experienced, a high-priced six-man uh, or player on the bench, whether it's Kanan, Peters, Goodrich, um, but I just think... Uh, you know, that matters also, even for half the points, that, that's it's worthwhile. All right, that's all we had uh, this season. Uh, remember to make comments. If you like the Fantasy Podcast, tell us, because uh, we may be back for a second season, you never know. And, maybe. Uh, maybe, who knows? And, uh, well, it's been a pleasure. Enjoy the Final Four. Watch on your league TV. You have everything. Uh, we have a pregame show also on YouTube coming up, which is going to be amazing. With Chima Moneke, with Dimitri Situdis, it's going to be fantastic. And just that, enjoy the Final Four games and uh, see you next season, hopefully. That's right. And may the best team win. Yeah, always.